Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as always from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Adam Jablin, who is in Boca Raton in Florida. How are you doing, Adam? I'm doing well, John. Again, thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And Adam is a an author and a speaker and uh, and a guide, I would say, in many ways, a spiritual fitness guide. Uh, but what we want to talk about today is you have something called the Hero Project. So a couple of um, so just a couple of things to begin with. First of all, you have a kind of an interesting background about you know how you the trials and tribulations you you went through in order to arrive at where you are today, and then the Hero Project. So maybe just a little bit of a background on those trials and tribulations and what they taught you. Absolutely. So I am coming up on 15 years clean and sober. I am an alcoholic. Congratulations! Congratulations! Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, also, I was, uh, I ran, helped run in a family business for 23 years, the number one lace manufacturing company uh, in the world. And, uh, you know, I like to, when I tell the story, I like for people to understand how, how big and how heavy of a burden that was. My grandfather was, let's say, Joe Montana. Okay. Mm. And then my father was Tom Brady. Right. And that kind of, you know, that kind of pressure to live up to these type of expectations, I got to tell you, just fueled that drinking and drugging uh, like crazy. But when I did get clean and sober, what I found out was all these gifts were dormant. All mm. the unbelievable qualities that I never experienced or got to wake up. And I didn't have to become my grandfather, Joe Montana. I didn't have to be Tom Brady, my dad. Uh, what did happen was I was more of a Phil Jackson within, oh. within our company. And I ran it in a very spiritual way. I knew every single employee's name. They loved me kind of a Knights of the round table type feeling. And, um, and for my 23 years, we, we kicked ass. And when it was time to uh, pack up and sell, it was time for me to launch uh, my, my coaching and, and the hero project. And it, it does, dive into health, nutrition, fitness, of course, but uh, recovery in all aspects. You know, so many people are suffering from addictive thoughts, addictive behavior, just dependencies, you know, not even an addiction, just faulty dependencies. Sometimes a codependence on your wife or your codependence on chocolate or whatever. Um, and uh, I bring my business experience into it. So I try to really give my client everything holistically. Yeah, no, it's 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 fascinating, Adam. And I have a friend who I think is I think he's fifteen years or so as well, like you know, um, sober. Uh, he turned his life around as well. Um, so that's that's an amazing it's an amazing feat. But I think you touched on something there that I just wanted to come back to, and that is that um, we tend to think of destructive behaviors and addictions. We tend to think of them as the big things, right? It's alcohol, it's drugs, and maybe it's I don't know other 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 of the big ones. Um, but there's a lot of addictive behaviors or codependent behaviors or just destructive habits that we have that we don't look at in the same way because maybe they're, they don't appear to be on the same scale. Um, but the impact they're having on our lives is pretty dramatic. Absolutely. And, and what I have found with the majority of my clients is even though they may be in the bigger picture, small things, what it does create is uh, a double life as in my client, he or she is showing this person, I'm happy, I'm smiling, I'm, I'm happy to be here, but inside they're dying because they can not stop this thought, this behavior, this uh, dependency, whatever you and I would like to word it. And that amount of pain of feeling like a fraud all the time, of, of not being aligned and separating, like just it, it, it eats them up and it takes away from being a good father from being a good husband, from being a good mother, from being a good wife, from being a good son, from being a good daughter, because you're constantly in this conflict between you and you. You know what I yeah, mean? Oh, totally. And, and I love the way you said they're like feeling like a fraud, because I do think you can you can skate along for a certain amount of time, but eventually that inner conflict is going to come to a head. And think of it, it it's a pretty miserable 
experience to be presenting one face to the world and having another one inside and people like relating to you as one person but you're the other person is there so they're almost relating to somebody who doesn't really exist to yeah. some, I mean and that's that's all that's a very messed kind of schizophrenic way of living john i did that for years you know my alcoholism and addiction i really was an actor um mm -hmm. that showed you this guy that was happy and you know, just running this family business and happily married but inside i was dying and uh, drinking to make it go away, popping pills to make it go away. So, you know, I when I'm coaching people, it's really, it's a lot, of, granted, I got all the diplomas and the certificates and all mm -hmm. the things that I need, but so much of it comes from experience. Yeah, yeah. And and the other thing that was interesting that you just referred to there, because I think it's, uh, it's another great lesson for people is that um you know you talked about joe montana and, and tom brady like you know the quarterbacks the stars the you know the people in the limelight but uh you said that you ended up discovering that you were the phil jackson and the fact is that at the end of the day all great teams have have a great coach all great individual uh, achievers have somebody behind them who's coaching and managing them and and I think, yeah, I think sometimes today we focus on the, you know, this, we focus on the quarterback and the star quality and we kind of denigrate in some way the, the coach or the manager role, but that's much more suited to a lot of people. And that's, and you don't always have to have been the star to be the great coach. Absolutely. You know, and that's, I think it's a tough thing for, a, it's actually a really deep conversation, right? Like, mm -hmm to choose the proper model. I'll give you an example. I'm, I'm five, six. I used to love uh, bodybuilding. I still stay in very good shape, but um, you know, for me to do Arnold's workout was ridiculous. Like I was built more like his friend, Franco Colombo, but right. on my wall was Arnold Schwarzenegger and, you know, a six foot four Austrian Oak and a five foot, you know, but his best friend was five foot four and the strongest. So if you could pick the right model, you know, I'm five, six, probably trying to fly like Michael Jordan wouldn't be the greatest thing. However, there was Muggsy Bowes, maybe model my game after him or so, but little things like that in our careers, little things like that in our lives, it goes a long way, you know? Yeah, because I, I think the self, yeah, because I think self-awareness, I mean, it's such an, it's such an critical and important thing, but it's a really difficult thing because just what you outlined there uh, to actually have to say to yourself, you know, I'm not going to be the star on the on the court, but I'm okay because I'm going to be the guy pulling the strings and getting everything right on on the side of the court, and I'm okay with that. And yeah, you have to make that conscious decision. You have to sort of go, well, okay, I admire Arnold, but now I'm going to have to focus on the other guy because Arnold is not me. Yeah. Yeah, but I think, you know, it's funny because there's just a, so many parallels to life, right? So when I finally embrace that I'm not the star quarterback, but I'm Phil Jackson, my career and my charisma and my confidence grew. Um, mm -hmm. I can only imagine someone like Dennis Rodman, you know? I mean, when he focused on being the best rebounder and defender, uh, he became as big a star as, as Michael Jordan. Um, but if he wanted to score like Michael, it probably wasn't going to go as well. And I think, but, you know, it's funny, but sports have such a great uh, overall arch theme to business, to life. Uh, and so do movies. You know, you could just mm -hmm. find these little nuggets that, uh, that are relatable. Yeah. No, it's funny because you just remind me like back, uh, you know, I played, I played what you guys here called soccer, football in school. Uh, and and when I was growing up, you know, I always wanted to be the center forward, right? I wanted to score the goals, the glory position, right? Sure. And that's where I tried. That's where I tried to play in my first few years. Yeah, and I was moderately successful. Um, and then one day, uh, I can't remember what happened, but somebody um, there was a need, there was an injury or something, and they moved me back into the center of defense. And I was like, I don't want to play here. But it turned out that, you know something, I was far better at stopping other people scoring than I was scoring myself. And it turned out that actually I had a great, I had a great time in school. Like I was the youngest member of the senior team, my captain did eventually, all of that good stuff. But it all came from eventually going, yeah, this is, 
I'm better off here, even though it was, <laughs> even though I had to overcome that thing as a kid to go, okay, so I'm not going to be the star up front. I'm going to be the person who kicks people a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you, but it, you know, it's, a, it's a journey of finding, right. Of yeah. finding ourselves and self-discovery. And by the way, that's a, li a big part of, of why I call it the hero project, right? yeah. the star, right. The, each, each client of mine becomes the hero of their own lives. And it's not a program. Right. I don't want it to be like P90X where every Monday yeah. is chest and back and every Wednesday is shoulders and arms and, you know, or uh, a 12 step program, which saved my life. Uh, I want the, the, the person to feel like it's a project, you know, and each, yeah. each person is the right, because you, you got, we got to find what they're, what they maybe want to be Arnold, but they're Franco. They may want to be the, the lead goal guy, but they're, you know, they're John, you know, and, and yeah. that's part of the discovery with my coaching. Yeah. So, so tell me about the hero project, how it came about. And as you said, it's, you're calling it a project rather than a program. And I presume part of that is because it's ongoing, right? Uh, it's ongoing. Um, yeah. Yeah. But tell me about the genesis of the hero project. Sure. Uh, two things, by the way, ongoing and unique, right? As in a program mm -hmm. is, is it's kind of cookie cutter and that's great for a lot, but a project, you know, if you and I were to build a, a, a building together for our business, it's a project. It's, it's going to be, mm -hmm. With our architects, we're going to design it the way we want. It's going to be individualized. So, um, you know, I don't want to sound corny here, but really, I have the man that really helped save my life. His, his name is Dion. He's a rock and roll Hall of Famer. Uh, songs that are timeless, like Ruby Baby and Run Around Sue and wow. the, uh, the Wanderer. And, you know, he's. Wow. He's idolized and looked up to by Bruce Springsteen and Bob Dylan. And, and he has a number one album right now. And this is a guy that helped save my life. And, and through our conversations, he, he brought me to what I would call a higher reality, how to live in a, in, a, in, a, in a different way. And if I were to say what my mission statement of the Hero Project is, it's, it's usually around 12 weeks, or usually around 90 days of me bringing people into that higher reality and we do it through all aspects and many many conversations and you know i could tell you about it but it's kind of like experiencing and telling you about it are two different things right like sure. i can tell you how to be a navy seal you know you go you pass the test you sign up you know you you don't quit you don't ring the bell you go through the hell week, blah, blah, right and then you get you know but but now go do it right mm -hmm. so it's it's very one-on-one -on -one. uh it's very experiential and, um, but, but the reason I brought Dion up is if I could bring people into those feelings and those conversations, I feel like then they've really, they've really completed the hero project because they're going to see life completely differently. So, so just explain a little bit what you mean by a higher level. Yeah, of course. So, um, there's reality right? Mm -hmm. There's reality. We all live in a certain reality. So if you and I watch Fox News all day, every day, we're going to think and believe a certain way. And if we only read the Bible every day, we're going to think and believe a certain way. And if we, um, and, and I'm not taking one or the other, right? Everybody sure. is allowed to choose what they want. <clears throat> but reality is to each and every person. And if I can bring my clients to raise their vibration, so to speak, raise the way they think, raise the way they, they talk, they start living in a higher reality. Life becomes very reflective. It becomes a hologram and, and they're living and experiencing what, what's happening inside of them, you know, and mm -hmm. unexpected things start happening, synchronicities that just it's it, if you, you people would say it's the law of attraction if you go into new age sure. people would say no that's just simply the teachings of jesus christ absolutely like they're all go back to the one and um but even though there's been a rebirth of it it's so interesting to me how much the spiritual life is still really not practiced the right way Mm -hmm. you know you know honestly if people want to make more money you know this right <laughs> don't don't focus on the money you're putting up a block yeah, yeah right you're putting up a block you know what i mean get get everything else in order and the money will come yeah yeah it's always i always get that advice to people about uh not so much money but relationships if you stop looking they'll turn up 
it's very interesting, right? So really the hero project and, and, and my work, if you, if you really want to be corny about it is a distraction. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really having them, dis I'm distracting them from the problem and having them focus on themselves for the first time. And, and focusing on solutions and love and life. And what happens is these problems that we like to focus, they, they tend to go away or something happens in the pause. Something happens in the relaxing and, and not getting agitated and not hyper obsessing and focusing. I have a client right now, we're talking about millions on the line, millions. The more he focuses on that, the more he pushes, he resists, and it's getting worse. And then when I got him to calm down, right, to relax, to be in the moment, to be Michael Corleone rather than Sonny Corleone, right, to be smart, cool, and calculated, not impulsive and, and argumentative, everything happened. Same guy. Yeah. Same yeah. individual. No. It's it's very fa it's fascinating uh, because there's a number of things you said there that I just wanted to pick up on. Um, for a start, when we're talking about our our existing realities, our own realities, right? Yeah. Uh, as you said, a lot of the times they're kind of borrowed realities in many ways because we let all these other we we focus on these things that shape our reality or inform us, uh, inform our reality, and. Uh, and it seems like today, like there are so many distractions and there's so many things you could you can fill your head with that it's become, I guess, almost like, um, you know, when you were when you were drinking, etc. I mean, it it totally distracts you from really focusing on yourself or on, on sort of having that alone time on thinking on being present with yourself. You got it. You got it. I mean, um, people like you and I. Um, we're, there's a bunch of us, right? But it's still, it's really interesting to me. There, there's no shortage of clients out there. There's no shortage of people in pain and there's no shortage of people lost. And what happens is, mm -hmm. I'm sure you find this too. Sure. You're, you're asking guests on, or I'm being, I'm being interviewed or I'm on this show and I'm on, right? With, with like-minded people, we start to think that, oh my God, there's so many of us. And, and really, we are still the minority. Mm -hmm. We are still the minority. So many people are lost. Even if they're wearing a shirt that says woke or yoga or vegan, or there's, they're, they're not getting to what's really going on inside, like you just said. And when you tap into that, now reality will change. Yeah. That's, so how do you, when you, when you, when you work with people, I mean, that's got to be one of the hardest things because it is one of the hardest things for anybody. And that is to, to live in the moment and to be present. Um, I think it was, maybe it was James Joyce or somebody who wrote like that we live at arm's length from ourselves. And I think that's what most of us do because we're either focused forward too much or we're focused backwards, but we're, we're always kind of away. It's not here today, present. It's somewhere away. It's away in the future. It's away in the past. Yeah, well, that's that's a lot of my uh, that that's a good portion, I should say, of the Hero Project, and 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 trying to, I I call this part becoming a mystic, mm. getting here now, getting here now. Now, what's difficult sometimes is is that I have some really high end clients, so I can't take the phone. That phone is is attached to them, right? But uh, I, I have said, and you'd be proud of me, I can't name the names because it would break HIPAA laws. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, let's text every single person that's really important that for two hours you're with me and give me that phone. The, the first 20 minutes is agony for them. But then, then we get into it and the fun begins. You know, and it's two hours, it's 120 minutes, right? But my client is finally here now mm -hmm. and i think that that is i mean if there's one thing that people t um, listening take away is that it is so incredibly important to spend some time with yourself and it is a very difficult thing and it's a thing that's almost if you look at like the pervasive culture is almost like anti that oh my goodness what do you mean spending time in your own cutting yourself off why aren't you 
why aren't you insta storying what you're doing right now or you know you'll never get your likes and your followers up if you don't do that but this idea or or some people just surround themselves with lots of people and stuff and don't even like look at the quality of the people they're surrounding themselves with but there seems to be this huge resistance to spending time with yourself john i gotta tell you i that's something that as, as much as I love to teach it, it's not the easiest thing to master. No. Um, and, and I fall short every day, every day. Um, but I think what's healthy about admitting that is I get it, you know, yeah. I get it. and I'm still more ahead of the curve of my clients. Because I, I, always, I tell every client, you know what I mean? I don't care how big or small they are. I don't care if they walked in with Rock Nation or if they walked in off the streets, right? But I always say, like, I'm not above you, right? So I'm not here and you're not down here. It's a road, right? And I'm further down the road. So I can look back and go, whoa, whoa, whoa make a left. Oh, down, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm further down. But that doesn't mean that I'm so, so evolved that I'm, you know, that I have every single answer. So, I, you know, I can be more of a mystic than them. I can be more in the moment than them. I can have way far less self-doubt. I can have way more enthusiasm and positivity, but I'm a work in progress myself. You know, I, I, I need that time alone. Yeah. And I think that's great. I mean, I think if you're working with someone, I mean, I think that's a, that's, that's fantastic because at the end of the day, like it's great to be mentored and coached by somebody who's done it all. Maybe they've done it all, they're hugely successful, they're retired and all. Um, it's very hard sometimes for, for them to really remember the road they traveled. Uh, and, and as well, we tend to look back with rose tinted glasses and we tend to remember all the things, maybe not the, exactly the way they were. But the fact is that maybe you're a couple of miles further down the road, you're still on the journey, you're still engaged. So that makes you obviously a, um, you know, a, a far, a far better coach in many ways, because it's just like, it's like, it's like having, you know, a player who retired 30 years ago, and he just calls up every day and tells the team, here's what you should do tonight. Bye. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I couldn't agree with you more. You know, there's that, you know, that expression, the tipping point, and, and usually mm -hmm. people that really become a success, people like you and I, we, we, you grit and you bear it. And what happens is it finally does tip. And, you know, it's so interesting to me, especially when I'm working with clients and clients that are really afraid and want to quit because there is a lot of money on the line or there is a lot of pressure. Um, it's so easy for somebody to say a sentence like, I was this close to bankruptcy, right? Or yeah. when you go into Steve Jobs' story or anyone, I was this close to quit, right? But if you can get them into that moment, like, okay, that's a sentence. What it was it really like? Every minute was agony. Every minute was torture. Every second was self-doubt. How is that possible? You're Ray Dalio. How is that possible? Mm -hmm. Well, now we're getting to know the, the real person of what it felt like, you know? But if you read it, or if it's an interview on YouTube, it's, oh, I was this close to quitting. Yeah. You know? No, I, I, think that's, I think that's a great point. And, and especially, I think nowadays that it's like that thing is like, people look at all these so-called overnight successes or people who've become, you know, you know, like Insta famous and all of that. And, and, and now everybody feels inadequate and everything, but they don't see the thousands and thousands of other people who failed and invested as much time. And maybe one person just got lucky, or maybe that person worked for years and years to establish that. And, uh, uh, and I just think that sometimes like we, we, we just think that there's a magic bullet or there's a shortcut. And, and that's why I always say, I think we live in a shortcut culture today and it's hard for people to understand that no, anything, anything worthwhile is going to take time and effort and it's not going to be a straight path. It's not going to be easy. As you said, to reach a tipping point, uh, you have to go through a lot of tripping points too. And um, I can only, I'm only giving you from my perception, my perspective, again, I'm a sensitive guy, but mm -hmm. for me, a lot of pain and um i don't wish that on people but i'm sensitive you know mm -hmm. so i wasn't able to detach when maybe i could have or should have and um i had to take my hits and i had to get my scars and i had to make my mistakes and i had to learn from them but i wouldn't change a thing yeah i wouldn't change a thing 
And that's what I think is really important because I think we all go through periods in life when we start to regret things. You know, we look back and we say, "Oh, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't done that." And and you know, I used to do that until I uh, and say, "Oh no, I wish I hadn't taken that job, or I wish I hadn't gone there." And then I'd go, "Hang on a second. It was all part of my journey. I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't done that because then I would have gone on a different path. And who knows where that would have ended up? But there's no point in in regretting things. It's they're there to be learned from." And maybe some, and as you, as you know, better than I do, like some of your most painful experiences are your greatest teachers. Well, I, I think equally, you know, I, I just, because mine has alcoholism and addiction and it doesn't mean that my mm-hmm. pain is any worse than yours. You know, it's all perspective and it's all relative. Um, I, what, what it does help me with is people with alcoholism and addiction yeah. and dependencies there. I can say I'm an expert, but my, your pain is just as, you know, look, somebody that lost their kid i can't relate to that and i don't want to relate to that Mm -hmm. um so you know there it's all relative yeah it is absolutely well listen um adam this has been this has been fantastic um all of adam's information is going to be below this video but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself what you, and what you do. And, uh, and as I said, all your contact information will be below here. Sure. You know, it's so funny. I was raised in a way where it's like uh, titles and, and, and you know, when I say it, I just like, I want to make a face at myself. Like, really? You know what I mean? Like, this is, this is what you're telling people you are. You know what I mean? I'm a guy. That's what I'm a guy. But, uh, you know, title wise, it would be. Uh, transformational life coach and recovery mentor. Um, I resisted what I was a long time. I hated the term life coach. I'm still not crazy about it, um, but it is who I am. So, it, you know, it is who I am. Uh, have a number one best selling book uh, called Lots of yep. Holic from a Sick to Sober Superman. Started a coaching program called The Hero Project. I have a free online uh, course called The Hero Seven, where you get a video every day. Uh, I'm starting a thing called the Hero 30. It's a Hero 30 Day Challenge on Facebook, and John, I'm I'm having the time of my life. You know, I'm a dad. Um, those kids are my juice, and uh, I really hope uh, when someone gets to know me that I make them proud. That's really how I feel in my heart. Yeah, listen, listen, fantastic, Adam, and I would absolutely encourage people to check out Adam's website. Like I said, it'll be below here and sign up, take the seven day challenge. Hey, uh, there's never a better time than now. I think everybody would agree that you've probably got a little extra time now. You're probably not commuting. uh, And maybe you want to maybe watch one episode less of your Netflix binge series today and and every day and check out the hero challenge. I appreciate it. By the way, those videos are about a minute and a half. So it's quick, it's easy, and it's informative. Yeah, no, I would highly encourage people. And I think uh, everybody should look at, you know, where what aspects of their life that they need coaching for. And, and you know, hey, life coach, um, let's face it, at the end of the day, life is the biggest thing you have. So you know, why not get a coach for that? <laughs> You're right. As I you're always right. as I always say, you probably yeah, whatever hobby you have, you probably have a coach for that, whether you golf or tennis or whatever. Yeah, but how about getting a coach for your life? John, um, it's it's a it's an Adam Jablin thing. I'm I'm a I'm a real pain in the ass. I don't I'm <laughs> I, part of my story is I'm constantly resistant to what I am, you know. Right. I'm not yeah, Tom Brady. I'm, I'm not Joe Montana. I'm not you know what I mean I am a like just just to accept that term took me about a year and a half. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. As I said, the, the, the self, the self-awareness journey is, is the toughest, but the most rewarding one that anybody can take. Yeah. All right. Well, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline, your CRM. Thank you, Adam. And thank you all for joining. And we will see you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.